Good morning. Wow, God is good. You, you guys doing all right this morning? Come on, Grant's got his McDonald's coffee, so he's doing all right. I don't know about the rest of y'all. He's got his coffee. I actually got one coming. Man, I gave it my best at that first service. Wow. Because we got some study to do together uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to be getting into some stuff. As you can see, I got a whiteboard. Okay, so that's about to happen. All right. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 4. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Darren, one of the pastors here. Shalom. <laughs> Uh, we'll invite you to meet up with me in the hallway after this service. I actually got a gift for you. It's uh, a copy of my book, Carve. So come and see me uh, in the hallway. I'll sign a book. I'll give it to you. If you've got questions on the church, I'll be happy to answer some of your questions. If I don't know uh, the answer, I'll send you to Elder Greg, and he'll, uh, he'll answer all your questions. Um, come on. Uh, don't call him Elder Greg. Uh, he, might, he might slap you. Um, we are in a series uh, where we're going through the book of Revelation, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And uh, uh, it's actually probably one of the most avoided books of the Bible. In fact, I could tell you uh, that in my own life, I avoided the book uh, as well. Uh, I was terrified of it. Uh, the only time I really acknowledged the book is during all of the praise and worship songs that quote from it. You know, so here I am, a worshiper and a Christian, okay? And I, and I love praise and worship, okay? But was terrified of the book of Revelation. Now, you'll notice I'm calling it Revelation because that's what it is. It's the book of Revelation, not Revelations. So the purpose of this book is to reveal Jesus. Let's try this out. The purpose of this book is to reveal so why wouldn't we want to understand it, right? Why wouldn't we want to study it if it's to reveal Jesus? In times like these, we need a revelation of Jesus. Amen? Uh, um, let me catch you up just in case you're new or newish. Uh, this book starts off with John being caught up. Just say caught up. Okay. Uh, it was caught up on the Lord's day. So revelation begins... Um, with John going into an awesome encounter. This was a Sunday, okay, um, the day of resurrection. The Jewish people used to primarily worship on Saturday, Saturday being Sabbath. Um, after the resurrection of Jesus, the early church made Sunday, the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, the day that they came together to celebrate with each other corporately. So here we are on a Sunday, happy Sunday. What are we doing here? Well, we come together because we're in Seattle, so we don't do the weekly thing. We come together once a month, okay? Um, or some of us once every six months, okay? Um, just laugh. It'll make me feel better, all right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know I'm funny. All right, so, no, we come together each week corporately to do what? To celebrate together, okay, to celebrate, you know, people say, well, I am the church. Oh, we don't need, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to go to church, okay? I, I a church on YouTube. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Well, I understand that, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, things happen. We're not healthy or the doctor forbids us to leave the house, okay? You know, or, or, or you just, you don't have legs, okay? Then in that case, that, that, that's perfectly, but there's a lot of very healthy people that literally have no context for corporate. There's like, believe it or not, I, you guys are going to find this. You guys might not even believe me because here, here you are. Here we are together, right? There's a lot of people that have no value for the corporate coming together. So here we are. We're together again to do what? To, to celebrate the fact that our God is not dead. Jesus is not dead. He resurrected and overcame death. Okay, uh, enough on that. Um, you guys get so easily distracted. So it was the Lord's Day, and John uh, was caught up in the Spirit, okay? And he has this encounter. He hears a voice from behind him. He turns to see the voice, and when he turns to see the voice, he sees seven golden lampstands, and these would be the seven churches. So we've been studying uh, these letters to these seven churches. And, and who's in the midst of the churches, in the midst of the seven lampstands? Okay, Jesus, okay? And what's he doing? He's standing. Okay, and what's he wearing? He's wearing all white and a golden girdle. So Jesus is dressed like a priest. 
And, and, and that's what, you know, and what's he doing? Well, he's not sitting because in the temple, there was no chairs in the temple. There's no allowance for chairs. Why? It was the duty of a priest to stand and serve. So the first revelation that takes place is Jesus as priest in the midst of his church, standing and serving, loving and confronting, because that's what love does, um, the church. So uh, for those out there on the internet, on the world wide web, Shalom. Okay, this is to you because nobody here is critical. <laughs> nobody in this room is critical. So for all the critical people on the interwebs, hello. Okay, and I know some of you aren't critical. Okay, I bless you. Okay, but to the critical ones, okay, hello, grace and peace. All right. Um, uh, for those that say, I'm done with the church. Okay, I'm done with the church. Okay, the church is bad. I'm good. Uh, and, and you're just like, it's, it's so corrupt and, and it's a Constantine thing and Rome ruined everything. So I'm done, done with it. Okay, there are people that believe that. All right, now, let me just tell you that even before Rome kind of messed everything up, okay, there was still a church. It was still run by human beings. It still had issues and it still had sin. Funny thing, okay, wherever you have humans, their ten sin tends to show up, okay? So in the midst of seven imperfect, in, in, in some corrupted churches, guess what Jesus is doing? He's standing and serving and loving and confronting an imperfect church, okay? So for those that would say, you know, the church is messed up. Yeah, you're right. Okay, for people to say, the church is screwed up. Yeah, you're right. The church has sin. Yeah, you're right. Okay, awesome. And that's, that's why we're here. We are a company of priests. And before we get a revelation of Jesus as king, we first need a revelation of Jesus as priest. Why? Because in him we live and move and have our being, all right? So as he is, so are we, okay? So what do we do? We stand and serve an imperfect church with fallible human beings. We love, we serve, we speak the truth, amen? So uh, we, we uh, there is no such thing, okay, uh, 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 as doing Christianity without the church. There's just not. You can't do Christianity. You can't do, I'm, I'm all about Jesus. I just hate his church. You can't, you can't do that. Why? It's called body shaming. And you can't do headship without a body. It's just gross, right? Imagine, imagine you went to your friend's house and there's all your friends sitting around the table and then there's just a head on the table, no body. That's a picture of Christians that want to do Christianity with a head and not, not a church. It's just gross, <laughs> okay? Is he going to be there the whole time, right? Okay. Is, is that head just going to sit there like that? On the, it winked at me. Okay, like we don't, you know, we don't have to, okay, we don't have to do that, all right? So what we have there, what we've studied is Jesus' letter. This is amazing. A letter from Jesus to seven churches. Amazing. This would be, the first prophetic sequence in the book of Revelation. As we transition today into Revelation chapter four, okay, uh, we're gonna see the second prophetic sequence uh, that is unveiled here. Now, a lot of people see the book of Revelation as a timeline, okay? So they see from, you know, the whole entire book, all of these, all of these timelines. But as we're studying the book of Revelation, we're gonna see it through um, four prophetic sequences, and here's what we're going to see. It's actually the same unveiling four times. Just like the gospel is unveiled in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. So we see the same unveiling four times from four different angles, from four different intensities. Here's why I say this. Okay. Jesus writes the letter to the seven churches. Okay. And then all of this magnificent drama begins playing out in the heavens. No, no, no. This magnificent throne room encounter is actually playing out at the same time that Jesus is writing the letters to the churches. Okay. This is a big deal. The reason why it's a big deal is because here we are in Seattle, 2024, okay? And what we're going to see and what we're going to read is an encounter that's actually playing out in the throne room today. Okay, we're, we're going to get a revelation of the Christ, okay, and the throne room. We're, it, this is going to be like, this is amazing, okay. The word of God is like a live camera feed into the throne room. We're going to get revelation, if you will. We're going to get disclosure. We're going to get a behind-the-scenes look at something that's actually alive and active that is taking place right now. 
That is incredible. I love that they covered this up with a black cloth. Why? Because like this is when we read the word, when we read the book of Revelation, here's what happens. Ta-da! Okay, and it got stuck. That wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't like we practiced it. Ta-da! Right? This is when we read the word, the word uncovers reality. The word uncovers the truth. And when this becomes uncovered and we receive the word and it comes into us, guess what? Um, this word inside of us, all of a sudden, we become the whiteboard. All of a sudden, we become living epistles. All of a sudden, we, be we become little apocalypses. And then from us, the revelation of revelations begins to be read through our lives, through the church. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a lot. I'm going to go fast. You know, uh, I don't know if I can go any faster than I did in the first service, but I will tell you what. Uh, we broke every seminary speed limit in the first service, and I'm going to do the same thing. I've got 37 minutes with you, okay? In the next 37 minutes, we are going to study with intensity the entire fourth chapter of Revelation. And let me just tell you, in, even in doing so, I'm going to be as thorough as I can. There's going to be some of you where I lose you, okay? But that's just what happens when you're going 130 miles an hour, and don't ask me how I know but it might have something to do with Wayne. <laughs> okay, so listen, you're gonna have to keep up. You're gonna have to stay focused, okay? You're, you're gonna have to keep your Instagram feed off, okay? Because I got something that's way more interesting than anything your stupid friends are doing, okay? This is the fourth chapter of Revelation, okay? This is so incredible. And to do this, we're gonna stand for the reading of the word. We're gonna read through the text first, okay? And then, then you can sit down and chill out. And I'm gonna like, I'm gonna break down the breakdowns, okay? This is gonna be good. Holy Spirit, we're gonna need your help, okay? Just say, Holy Spirit, help Darren right now. And just say, uh, Holy Spirit, give me the grace to figure out what the heck he's trying to say. Because I know Darren, I know he's going to try real hard. But Holy Spirit, I want what's, uh, Holy Spirit, I want what's coming from you, okay? Just, hit, just pray this with me. Say, Holy Spirit, be my filter. Is that good? Just say, Holy Spirit, be my teacher. He sure will, okay? I'm going to do my, my best, but I, I, I'm feeble, okay? I'm just a, I'm a human, but man, I'm telling you, we're gonna, the word of God's going to do, it's going to do justice this morning, okay? All right, here we go. After this, everyone say, after this. I look and behold, stop repeating after me, a door, <laughs> we'll be here all day, <laughs> a door standing open in heaven, okay? Behold, a door, it's not closed, it's open. Where is it? It's in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said what? Said, come up here. Come up where? Come up here. And I'll do what? I'll show you what must take place after this. Verse 2, at once I was in the spirit, okay? Second prophetic stanza. And behold, a throne, where? In heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper, transparent, clear, beautiful, and carnelian of, of, of Sardis. This is, um, uh, okay, we'll get into this. Uh, and around the throne, okay, around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Verse 4. And around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peelings of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. These are the seven lamps that are on the seven lamp stands. You have the churches and the seven spirits all before the throne. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal, and a around the throne, on each side of the throne are the four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like an ox, and the third living creature was the face of a man, and the fourth living creature was like an eagle in flight, and the fourth living creature, um, uh, and the four living creatures, each one of them with six wings, okay, are all full of eyes all around and within. 
And day and night, they never cease to say altogether, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, verse 9. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, let's do it in unison, worthy are you our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created the reading of the word let's pray holy spirit we welcome you we welcome your glory we welcome your lightnings and your thunders we join in with the heavenly creatures and with the elders ascribing worth and value we say everything that we are was created to magnify and to ascribe worth to your holy name we declare you the lamb that was slain we declare you our beautiful warrior king lord i ask lord that your strength your virtue your life your majesty lord the, your goodness would be made manifest in this place physically spiritually lord that it would it would be manifest even in the midst of our bodies father i ask lord for conversion moments stepping out from death to life from hard hearts to soft hearts that we would step into renaissance rebirth and revival lord i pray lord that we step out from the cruel um, from the cruel uh, dictatorship of religion and step into the life-giving wonder of the family of God Lord we love you <laughs> we worship you Lord we say holy is your name in Jesus name everybody said amen, amen. sit down sit down sit down it's what's that what oh thank you um no, is that okay? Okay. I was being communicated to. Is there somebody here whose name is John? I'm just kidding. All right, that's not funny. All right. <laughs> like he's got an earpiece in. Okay, no words of knowledge when the earpiece is. I'm just kidding. Okay, thank you, Josh. All right. Say, after this. Okay, let's go. He says, behold, a door standing open, where? In heaven. And the first voice, I heard a voice speaking to me. What did the voice say? It says, come up here. Just declare it with me right now. Come up here. Come up here. Okay? Um, uh, come up here and I'll do what? I will show you what must take place, okay, after this. Okay, this word after is the Greek word meta, okay? Uh, it can actually be translated um, with this, okay? Um, I like the mere translation on this text by Francis Dutoit. I'll read it to you. It says, come up here and I'll show you how everything coincides with what you have already seen. You are doing justice when, with the text when you read this. Why? Because when you read it, okay, uh, taking this word meta and saying this coincides with what you have already seen. Now you see the letters to the seven churches and you will see this revelation harmonizing with the present, okay? So we are going to see that this book is uh, divided up into these four prophetic encounters. Every time John says, I was caught up in the spirit, okay, we go into the next stanza. This prophetic sequence is going to be the longest of the sequences. The next one we get to will be in Revelation chapter 17, okay, and then Revelation chapter 21. All right, it begins here with come up, okay? Come up here, why? The door is open, meaning what? You have access, okay? Come up here, and I will show show you some things. This is a big deal. Why? The first century church needed to see some things. They were seeing the world with a set of filters, okay? Just like you and I are seeing the world today, okay? Uh, he says, come up here. I'm going to show you some things. Why? You're going to need to see the world the way I see the world. You're going to need to see me for who I really am. All right, the first century church was being dominated and even crushed by a political spirit. 
It was being dominated and crushed by the Roman Empire. It was soon going to be literally dominated and crushed by Nero in the persecution against the early church and against the whole religious system. There's going to be a clash of systems, a violent clash of systems. At this point, the believers are underneath religious pressure, political pressure, they are being crushed by varying contrasting ideologies. And this is how they are seeing the world. Thank God we're not like them, right? <laughs> Go to any Christian media platform and I can show you dominant worldviews and ideologies that are polluting the message that they're trying to deliver. The same thing is true of the early church. Here is a crushed church. Here is a crushed people. Here is an oppressed people, okay? And, and Jesus says to John, come up here. Why? I'm going to give you a revelation that's going to change your perspective. It's going to change the way you see me. It's going to change the way you see the world. This revelation is going to remove all the religious filters. This revelation is going to remove all the political pollution that is Come into the church. Um, I come up here. Why? Because none of that stuff is in me. So I'm going to unpollute you with the revelation. Listen, the revelation of Jesus Christ will so, full, will so fill you that the pollution will come up and out of you. So what does he say? He says, look up. I see a door that's open. You have access. Come up here and I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to show you uh, truth, okay? And so, um, we are. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to come up. We're going to see what's going on. We're going to see him. We're going to see the throne. We're going to see this glory dynamic. We're going to see what's there. And more importantly, we're going to see what's not there. And then we're going to say, wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? And so he says, I was in the spirit. This happened by God's grace. Okay? He didn't, he didn't click his little ruby slippers together and say, heaven, heaven, heaven. Okay? Um, God, okay? He, he, you know, he, he didn't say some little mantra. He didn't, he, there wasn't any sort of religious, this was God's grace, that God's grace uh, ascended him. It, it took him up, okay? Uh, this is pretty awesome, okay? Uh, even in the book of Enoch, okay, the angels, uh, he needed angelic assistance to have his encounter, okay? Uh, this has been made possible by grace, okay? The ascension of the church, the ascension revelation, okay? There is no force here. God invited him. He says, come up here. Now, what, what's going on here? Okay, the, the Jewish people would recognize this. Uh, they, this isn't the first time that man's been invited up to tabernacle with God, okay? Uh, they would have been reminded of Exodus chapter 19. Now, in Exodus chapter 19, this is when the very scary, freaky deaky, fire glory of God himself comes onto the earth, comes onto Mount Sinai, okay? And so we're going to read this together, and my incredible team will put this up on the screen. This is Exodus 19, uh, beginning in verse 16. And on the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very trumpet blast. This is sounding like revelation, isn't it? Wow. And a trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because of the Lord had descended uh, on it in fire. Did you guys read that right? Mount Sinai, an actual literal mountain on the earth, was wrapped in smoke. Why? Because God, the God of fire, was on it. The smoke of it went up like smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, and Moses spoke, and God answered him in what? God answered him in thunder. And the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. What, what happens here? Yahweh says to Moses, look up, the door is open, heaven has come to earth, Okay, uh, Yahweh has come to earth. Who wants to come and meet with me? Okay, what do we know? We know that Moses brings all the people, all the Israelites, 
All the Israelites come to the base of the mountain. They see the, the lightnings, the thunders. They see the fire. They feel the earthquake, okay? And they are all terrified, okay? And out of all the people, they say, we ain't going up there. <laughs> we ain't going up there. Send Moses. And out of an entire generation, there's only one person who had the courage to come up here. He said, come up here. And they send Moses. And Moses goes up there to have, to have an encounter to have an encounter with God. All right. Um, what do we know? That since the very beginning, all God has ever wanted was a home. If you were here, part of our Genesis series, we actually went through the entire book of Genesis, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. It took us 18 years. <laughs> Started the service when I was, uh, the, the series when I was seven, I think. And, but when you're reading the book of Genesis, that's Eden. It's ever since the very beginning, all God has ever wanted was a home, and that was what Eden was. Okay, Eden wasn't the entire earth. It was a small place on the earth. It was the place of convergence, overlap, heaven and earth. Uh, God says to Adam, be fruitful and multiply, steward the earth until the entire earth is a temple unto Yahweh. Okay, what happens at the end of Revelation? Okay, uh, at the end of Revelation, the church doesn't go up, heaven comes down. Uh, what does that mean? It means that the end, if you will, is not heaven. The end, if you will, is earth and heaven together. Amen. That means that when we get to the end of Revelation, you're like, this looks familiar. Yeah, because I guess you could say metaphorically, we end back where we began in Eden. All right, what does that mean? Guys, if you're part of this whole thing, one term that we don't use is back to Eden. Come on. Come on. Why? We ain't going back. We're not going back to Eden. We're going forward. God's doing a new thing. Okay? Uh, what does that mean? The day is going to come when heaven comes down, when there is justice, the, the, recon the reconciliation, the restoration of all things. Okay? Uh, so, uh, praise God. All right. Moses is on the mountain. Okay? And God so wants to tabernacle with his people. God so wants to tabernacle with you. God wants to be with you. He wanted that in Eden. Man messed things up. Sin messed things up. He's with Moses. He just wants to be with his people. So what does he say to Moses? He goes, I want for you to build a tabernacle on the earth. Okay? This is going to be like my temporary residency. Okay? This is a, I'm going to give to you a blueprint. Okay? I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, uh, Patty, uh, will you want to be my, my drawer? Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty, Pastor Patty Richardson. We haven't rehearsed this, uh, but Pastor Patty actually knows this stuff um, incredibly well. Uh, she's going to help me diagram the blueprint given to Moses for the God's occupancy, his, his, uh, his tabernacle, the, the place, you know, what he had there on Mount Sinai, he wanted that down there amongst the people. Uh, the problem is sin. Wouldn't you agree that's a problem? Okay, the problem is sin, and because of sin, there had to be separation. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to draw out a picture of the tabernacle. And uh, so we've got the outer courts. We've got this big courtyard. A big courtyard. The outer courts... All the Jewish people could come there, yeah? They could watch the sacrifices. They could watch the priest as he comes. Um, once a year, okay, that's a pretty big deal. Once a year, the priest would come, okay, make atonement for the people. Uh, on the day of atonement, the priest would come and actually get to come into, um, uh, the, uh, into the Holy of Holies, okay? So we've got a tent, a place of, of meeting with the Lord inside of the outer courts. Patty, I'm not even looking at you because I just trust you so much. She's just crushing this. This is so much better than what I tried to do in the 9 a.m. Because I was feeling all this pressure. I was feeling the clock. And so I was, it was like the worst game of Pictionary you've ever seen, okay? You're like, a monkey? <laughs> no, it's not a monkey. All right, so here we have our, our tent. The tent is divided into two parts, okay? So we've got the holy place, which the priest would have to pass through first, and then we go into the holy of holies. Um, outside of the tent, we have the bronze laver, the, the bronze basin. Uh, this is a, a, a quite a large uh, place of washing where the priest would, would wash himself, even wash the sacrifice before going into the place of encounter, okay? 
We also have an altar. We have a bronze altar out there um, as well. So outer courts, we have the inner courts. It's separated. Um, Patty, you're so awesome. That is so perfect. Ah, oh, you did so good. Can we just give Pastor Patty one more big uh, thank you? All right, let's go through this. Uh, Patty, I think that's good. I'll ha- maybe I'll have you come up and do the throne room a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, stay there, stay there, stay. Let's work together, let's work together. All right, so now in the Holy of Holies, we have the ark. What is that? It's a, it's a box, it's a wood box, but it's covered in gold. Okay, what's inside of that? The commandments, okay, the commandments that would be written upon our heart. We have Aaron's budding rod inside of the Ark of the Covenant. That's, uh, the, that's symbolic, prophetic of the cross, resurrection, life inside of uh, the Ark. The Ark is the mercy seat, okay, it has two cherubim uh, on the Ark. The Ark is the throne of God. It is the place that Yahweh sits, okay? We have a veil. This veil is a veil of separation. It is the line, the demarcation line that separates um, the utmost sanctity and beauty and glory of God from everything else. Remember, only the high priest goes in, okay? Not you, not I, not sinners, okay? Um, uh, Everybody stays out. Others, only the high priest, okay? On the sides of the temple, okay, in this place, in this, uh, 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 we have the uh, altar of incense, Okay, that's actually outside, isn't it? The altar of incense? Yep. Yep, and that represents worship. What is worship? Worship is human participation in the life of God. Okay, we have inside of the, of the uh, 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 place of meeting, we have the candlestick. Okay, and we have the sevenfold candlestick, and it's shining. What's it doing? It's illuminating the table of showbread. There we have the 12 loaves, symbolic, prophetic of the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, it's also prophetic for all of humanity represented in the broken body of Christ. We also have wine in there as well. Two curtains, okay? The first curtain here, okay, Uh, into the Holy of Holies. Um, uh, Sorry, first, first, first curtain brings you into the holy place. Okay, the holy place, and then into uh, the holy of holies, okay? Um, These veils, okay, these veils of separation, okay, are seen uh, in the prophetic, speaking of the flesh of Christ, okay, being torn. You'll remember that when Jesus died, okay, uh, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, okay, the, 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 this whole thing, this tabernacle was recreated into more of a permanent structure that would be the temple. When Jesus died, the veil, the flesh of Christ was torn. Okay, so now Patty, uh, I, I think yeah, we're, torn it right there. okay, I think we're good. And this is okay, where I'm going to blow good. up your, your okay. drawing. Okay, <laughs> this is where I'm going to ruin it. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. That was just awesome. That was so, per- so perfect. And just in time to be able to stream it to the masses. <laughs> Hello again. All right, here we go. The curtain. All right. Separation, right? Separation. Separation. Who's got separation anxiety? Okay, listen. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Don't laugh. All right. So, here you have humanity, okay? Here you have all of creation separated from the glory of God. Is that what God wanted? No. Is that what it was in Genesis 1? No. Is this what it is with the restoration of all things? No. This is temporary, okay? This is a prototype. Uh, This is a blueprint. But when Jesus dies, all of this glory from the holy place, okay? Um, Guess what? It is let out, okay? And all of a sudden, all creation is exposed to the radiation of Christ Jesus as all of creation is now made subject to his glory. And that is why we say, okay, that the glory of the Lord has covered the earth. And what we need is the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as it covers the earth. Why? The glory is no longer contained in the holy of holies. His flesh has torn the veil, and now there's no more separation. Whether you believe in him or you don't believe in him, you right now, okay, are being exposed to the radiating goodness of God. There's nothing you can do about it. Just quote me right now, all creation 
has been exposed is being exposed to the glory of God. All right, then we have uh, the huge uh, uh, bronze laver. This is the big basin where the priests would wash themselves, okay? Uh, they would cleanse themselves. What is this? This is water baptism, okay? This is the crossing over from death into life. This is what we just celebrated, okay? It's cleansing so that you can go in. What is this? This is Jesus washing the feet of his disciples in a basin. Why? They are gonna participate in his death, burial, and resurrection. He's literally washing them like a priest, preparing them as priests to cross over from death into to life like the Israelites from Egypt into the promised land but they first have to walk through the Red Sea through the basin through okay hallelujah all right and what's happening outside of the courts we have the place of sacrifice okay isn't it interesting that when Jesus was sacrificed they took him they took him outside of the city they took him outside the city gates okay where he would be sacrificed on the altar all right Verse 3, and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. Okay, this is sardius. This is uh, a special stone actually from sardius. We, we studied this. Okay, jasper, okay, is, the, uh, is, the, uh, is associated with Judas. Sardis is, uh, is associated with Benjamin. Jasper speaks of, the, of, the, of Jesus, the clear, it uh, speaks of his, of, of his clarity, his transparency, his light, his glory, okay? This, this speaks of his holiness, okay? Uh, this uh, Carnelian, this Sardius, this is um, associated with the tribe of Benjamin, okay? So two tribes associated here, Judah and Benjamin. It was the color of a ruby, and it speaks of the humanity of Jesus. In fact, Adam, his name means red. It speaks of the blood of Jesus that was shed, okay? And then we, it also describes a rainbow, okay? So here we have a throne and we have a rainbow, okay? Here's what we're doing. We're studying Revelation chapter 4, okay? And we're looking at... Uh, the layout of heaven and we're looking at the model that exists now and it actually existed before the tabernacle we're looking at the source we're looking at the duplicate of the source and yet there are variances some very significant variances that will actually catalyze inspire and awaken true worship What's up with the rainbow that goes around the throne in Revelation 4? It's a reference to Noah, okay? The first time we see a rainbow. The rainbow speaks of the goodness of God, okay? You'll remember that after Noah and his family came off the ark, it was, they saw the sign, the rainbow. It was a sign of his mercy, okay? What is, it, it, it's a sign in the heavens around his throne. It's the rainbow, yes, but what is it? It's the glory of God. And what's the glory of God? The glory of God is the goodness of God being made manifest so that you can experience it. Now with Noah, this is the glory of God <laughs> um, being made manifest through a rainbow. And this is a picture of his mercy. Okay, this is a picture of his justice and his mercy. They go through together. Now in the Greek, are you ready for this? The word rainbow doesn't exist. So what do we have here? We actually have a bow. Over the throne is a bow of glory, M a mercy bow. What is this? This is God. This is military language is what it is, okay? This isn't like, this isn't rainbow Seattle language, okay? Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of us, we think, you know, rainbows, yay! No, no, okay. This is not yay rainbow, okay? This is like, this is, this is war rainbow, okay? This is the bow of God. Above his throne, he has hung up his bow. This is the sign of his mercy. This is a sign of his goodness. And what have we done to take the imagery of our warrior king who has, who has in his mercy and in his goodness hung up his bow and said, never again will I flood the world again. He has hung up his weapon 
verse 4, and around the throne were 24 thrones, and seats, and seated on these thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. Okay, we're going to talk about this next week. Are these, are these elders um, angels? Are these elder, elders humans? Okay, this is, this is amazing. This is incredible. But we get into this in, in Revelation chapter 5. The answer is yes. There, there was a changing of the guard that took place upon the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. And what we see now in this text are 24 elders, 12 and 12, the first 12 being the 12 tribes of Israel who long awaited for coming Messiah, Redeemer. So here we have 12 elders, okay, representing um, the uh, 12 priests, the 12 tribes of Israel, and they are representing the Old Testament and the generations that awaited the coming of, of Yeshua. On the other side, we have the 12 apostles representing the church of Jesus Christ that got to experience his promise, his yes and amen made manifest on the earth. Here we have the Old Testament and the New Testament, 12 witnesses, 12 witnesses on both sides of the cross. Uh, there's also, uh, there's so much imagery and I, we're, we're, we're flying through this, like I said, incredibly fast. Um, you, can just, you can just go as deep as you want to uh, go here. But you remember the, the 12 loaves uh, in the temple, right? The, the 12 loaves. Uh, what we have here is a double portion of the 12 loaves uh, through the 24 elders that surround the throne, these priests, okay? Again, what are we seeing? Everything that existed here first existed there. Heaven came first and earth was the echo. Heaven is the origin. Heaven is, 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 is reality. Everything else was, was co-created here in this realm. So we're seeing the prototype. We're seeing the signs, the, the, the symbols. But now in Revelation 4, we see the source. We see the origin. Verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Out of the throne is coming what? Lightning. Out of the throne is coming what? Voices. Out of the throne is coming what? Thunders. Outside of the throne, from the throne, is coming the seven lamps of burning fire. Where is it coming from? From the throne, okay? The throne is the center. The, the throne is the focal point, okay? In verse 6, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. It's the bronze laver. It's the place where priests wash themselves. It's the Red Sea. It's the River Jordan. It, this, it's the, it represents nations. This is, is the, 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 the priest preparing themselves for encounter. It's, it's the throne. It's the basin. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are the four living creatures full of eyes from front and behind. The lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man, all with six wings, all with eyes, okay? All witnessing what is taking place in the throne room, okay? Witnesses, the 24 elders, witnesses, witnessing, Okay, this means there is, there is legal evidence and witnesses for everything that has been established all the way from the beginning until this point, okay? The six wings, okay? Speaking of how does the glorious gospel of Jesus the Christ, how is this mobilized? Six, symbolic of humanity, the lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man. Speaking of divinity, the nature of, okay, the lion, ox, and eagle, man can also speak of the four dispensations of the gospel, okay? You have the ox, which is like the, the Old Testament, okay? Uh, uh, an era of, of works, okay? You have the eagle, okay? Uh, the prophets that were foretelling of the coming of Yeshua, okay? You've got the lion. Uh, this is prophetic and significant of the, the, of the dynasty of David, okay? Uh, and, and, and then you have man, the coming of Christ, okay? Lion, ox, eagle, man, the glorious good news of Yeshua Messiah who came, lived, came, died, resurrected, ascended, is seated on the throne. The witnesses of old testifying, the witnesses of the apostolic era testifying, lion, ox, eagle, man.
understand, eyes in their wings, okay, being deployed by the church, the ecclesia, the wings uh, uh, of humanity taking forth this good news of shalom even into all the world. Eyes everywhere, witnesses everywhere. Um, even in the Holy of Holies, you had witnesses. You say, no, careful, careful. No, no, only the priest was allowed, okay? But who else was in the Holy of Holies? You have two cherubim on the ark. You also have two standing cherubim. This is prophetic. This is significant. Even in the Holy of Holies, you have four angelic re representations of the witnesses even in the Holy of Holies. All this sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is not the first occurrence of the lion, ox, eagle, man. Okay, we see this um, in Ezekiel. Uh, remember Ezekiel, and uh, what do we have in Ezekiel? We've got the same um, throne room type encounter in the book of, of Ezekiel. Okay, we've got um, uh, the, the throne of God. We've got the Merkaba. Okay, and, but what's it doing? It's moving, and it's being carried. And where is it going? Okay, the throne of God is being mobilized. Okay, in Ezekiel, uh, the, the people of God would hear that God is going with you. God has mobilized himself on journey. That Yahweh is going into exile. Yahweh is going into the curse on your behalf. And, and this is glory. This is witnesses. This is Yahweh. This is my mom and Keith. <laughs> You're saying, what are you talking about? Well, my mom and Keith are leaving today to go to Canada. But guess what they have? They've got their own version of a Canadian Merkaba. Okay, they've got a big camper. Okay, what's a camper? What's a mobile home? It's a home on wheels. Okay, so guess what? Uh, my mom and Keith are going to get in their home on wheels. They're going to mobilize their home, and their throne room is going to go with them. In Revelation chapter 4, this is not the mobile throne of God. This is the fixed throne of God. But think about this for a quick second. That God, Yahweh, went into the sufferings of his people on their behalf. That Christ came into our sufferings so that through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of Jesus comes inside of us. We receive the glory of the Lord at baptism of fire so that we have the glory dynamic of God, that very temple, that very Mount Sinai dynamic at work within us. On Mount Sinai, the God of fire came on the mountain, but in the upper room in Acts chapter 2, the God of fire came as a pillar of fire, um, separated up into 120 individual flames, came up and in to all 120 people as they were filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about this for a second. Because we love separation, because of sin, because we love separation, because it sells books, because we love separation, because it gets us clicks on YouTube, okay? If we can just convince people that they're separate, if we can just convince people that there are gyrations and religious things that you have to do to prove your, that, that if we can just convince people that I have to be your high priest, that Jesus isn't enough, if we can just convince people of these, of, of these, of these, of these realities, right? Um, but the, the, I had a really good think place where I was going, but I just totally lost my, my train of thought. Where was I? It was going to be so good. Maybe it'll come back to me. Separation. Separation. Yeah. Eric, what was I going to say? Anxiety. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just came back to me. Babes, can I hit that coffee? No, I'm just <laughs> Here, here's a question for you. We know that God, oh, you're, oh, thank you, babes. My wife. Do you think in the same way that sometimes our, our theology, we've got this separation kind of idea where we're always trying to get heaven to come, we're always trying to get Holy Spirit to come and go, okay? Uh, be, because we like, we like Sunday because Holy Spirit's in Sunday, but thank God that Holy Spirit's not in Monday because he wouldn't like our lives very much. <laughs> okay, here's my question for you. Do you think that we subconsciously have built curtains between the nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? So think about this for a second. If, if it's the three in one, God in three persons, and you, are, and you are filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, does that mean that you are in union with the Holy Spirit, but you're not in union with Jesus or the Father? 
Okay, here's where I'm going. I believe that the Holy Spirit is the agency, is the person. The Holy Spirit is the person that we receive, and in receiving the Holy Spirit, Christ himself, the Father himself, comes inside of us so that he can participate with the dynamics of the earth made active and possible by the indwelling spirit of Christ himself. This means what? It means the glorious dance of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and you and I. It's the three in one, but his ecclesia, his body, being folded up inside of himself. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is the gift of not just the Spirit, but the three in one, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, and the Spirit's active ability to engage with us, that the active ability of Jesus, that Jesus swan dives into our lives, Life through the immersion, through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means you're not just filled with the Holy Spirit, you're filled with Jesus. No, I just want the Spirit, not Jesus. I just want the Spirit, I don't want the Father. No, no. The evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is tongues. Externally, when you're filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit, they're filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit, and a sound came up and out of them. That's external. But what's the inward evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit? Biblically, it's when your spirit testifies with the Holy Spirit of your certainty of sonship, by which your spirit cries out, Abba, Father. So the inward evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is the active, glorious testimony, this certainty of your sonship, that you're not an outsider, but you are forever and eternally a son in the house of God. In the song... That's being sung today, and it was being sung last night. And one day, you know, many of you will experience the, the throne room while you're, you know, before you die. Why? Because what I read here is, is the voice said, look up, the door is open. Come up here, see what I see. Why? So that you can untether from all the ideologies, from the spirit of religion, from the political spirit that's completely botched this whole thing from being what I intended it to be. Come up here. Unshackle yourself from just everything that Christianity has become. Come up here and see me. See what I'm doing. See what the saints are doing. See what the witnesses are doing. Okay? You're like, well, I'm not a seer. Well, just read Revelation 4, and now you are. When you read Revelation 4, whoop, there it is. (laughs) Better to read it from his word than to make it up. It's the unveiling, it's the disclosure. It's what's happening right now. Holy, holy, holy. It's not one holy. That won't work. It's not two holies. Don't change the song. There are three holies. It's holy, holy, holy. One for the Father. One for the Son. One for the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is on the throne, the 24 elders fall down. Okay, and they worship and they lay their crowns down. They say, worthy are you, Lord, our God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. Before... And before that, let me show you what was, what is. (laughs) I'm just taking this thing for a walk. (laughs) Come, whiteboard. (laughs) This is ridiculous. All right. (laughs) The throne. And this is where you just got to put up with my bad art. Patty, okay, but the throne. 
sea of glass, the wash basin, okay? The lamb, okay, sorry. It's not a kitty cat, I promise. The lambs on the throne, four living creatures with six wings, six thrones, six thrones. Should be 12, right? Lightnings, thunder, okay, 24 elders, four living creatures, sea of glass, throne. Don't forget the bow, the glory of God, his mercy made manifest, the goodness made manifest. This was first. Before the formation of all things, this was first. This was, this is, and this is literally to come. This is going to come down. This was the beginning. This was the end. This is him. How many curtains do you see there? How many veils do you see there? How many? No. There is now no more separation. That his flesh was torn, so we now enter in. We enter into his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. What does he say to his church? He says, my beloved, look up. See, the door is open open. Come up here and see the world outside of all the ideologies. Come up and get a revelation of who I am. Come up and get a revelation of who you are. Come up and join in the song of the elders. Come up and join in the song of heaven. Heaven is the origin. This is the original. And everything else were replicas and signs and shadows. Where's, where's the Holy Spirit now? Where's, where's the glory now? Is it out there? Up there? Where's the glory? Where's the temple now? Where's the temple? You are what? A temple of the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? We are where? Seated with him in And now when we worship, we don't, we, don't, we don't strive to get somewhere. We, we, just hear, we just hear Revelation 4, my beloved, my bride, look at here, the door is open. My door is always open to you. Come in, worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. This is not a someday deal. We, we, have, to, we, have, to, we have to quit being ruled by time. That's why everybody's always trying to turn revelation into timelines because we're ruled by time. We step out of time. We see the invitation is now. Now. Come up now. Live from here now. Okay? We're ruled by space. Okay? There's nothing wrong with going to Israel. Okay? Go, go, to, go to Israel. Okay? But what you're really looking for can't be found in Israel. What you're really looking for is Him. It's here, it's him, it's now, it's you, it's in him. And that means that Revelation chapter 4, it takes away all our excuses. It takes away all of, our, all of our boundary lines. All of a sudden, we don't have any more. If I can't blame someday, someday, this is going to happen. No, 2,000 years ago is when this shift took place. Heaven will come down. There is still a wait until the second coming of Christ. We'll get into some of that. But look at what we have access to right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> so tonight, um, we start our glory series here uh, Sunday night. But I thought this was just pretty amazing, the timetable of God, and that we're studying Revelation 4 on the same morning 
is beginning our glory. Why? Because now you have a theology for glory. Now you have a theology uh, for access. Now you have a theology for worship. Isn't that good? It's all, it's all about the lamb who is seated on the throne. It's all about his goodness being made accessible so that we can receive and encounter his beauty. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight, encountering his beauty, participating in the heavenly melody, taking our crowns, our resumes, our, our gifts, our abilities, our, our entire life, our testimonies, and laying it down at his feet. Say, everything that I am, everything that I represent, my family, my, my everything, it, 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 it all, it's all unto you, King Jesus. I lay it down. This is my offering. This is my life. This is my good, my bad, my ugly. I, I lay it down at your feet and I enter into the song of heaven because you are worthy and we're a part and we are a family. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Why would we be afraid of this book? I wonder, I think religion has scared us away from the revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Just declare this with me. I'm not waiting to go to heaven. I'm bringing heaven to earth. I'm not trying to get in. I'm ushering heaven out. I'm administrating his glory out. And now I choose to see the world I choose to see Seattle. I choose to see America without the veils, without the filters. Some of you should, you should, take, you should take your GOP lenses off right now and say, I'm going to see the world through the Father's eyes. Some of you should take, you should take off your Democrat lenses right now and say this ideology is not going to affect the way I see the world, the way I see the church, the way I see Jesus. Okay? Let's just go and uh, close our eyes so that all this kind of disappears. Um, just, just say, Jesus, I choose to see you for who you really are so that I can see myself for who I really am. I choose to see your church the way that you see your church. Father, bring me up into your throne room so I can learn to worship, so I can learn to behold you, so I can learn to ascribe value and worth to who you are with my life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Greg came up to me before this service and he's like, do you know what the glory is? Greg, I'm probably going to butcher this conversation, but you said, you know, you know what the glory is? And like I forget what you said but you were like you're like it it, it, it it can't just it's not just something that can be shown it's something you got to see you got to see it played out it's like the beauty of God but you got to see it. you got to receive it you got to you got to experience it. I just can't show you a basketball and say that this is basketball like it like you've got to see it in action you got to see it you got to see it at work and and, and that is true if we are the church if we're the body We've got to see the glory. <laughs> We've got to. I can't just tell you about his goodness, right? I can't just tell you about his beauty. Like you, you've got to see it. You've got to. You've got a taste of it. So can we just do this for a second? Uh, can we just? Can we just? Can we just tell him how? how we love him and can we just invite his glory into our lives and into our place, even in this house today, since we're together? Okay. Jesus, show us your glory. <laughs> show us your beauty. Let your goodness manifest. Let your goodness manifest. Uh, your tangible glory, your, your Shekinah glory. 
We thank you, Lord. You revealed it to, uh, to a few of your disciples, Lord, uh, in the, the transfiguration encounter, Lord. You, you revealed it to Moses. You, you revealed it to all 120 in the upper room. The God of fire, Lord, show us your, your lightnings, Lord. Show us your thunder, Lord. Lord, Lord, we want to encounter. We want to encounter. We want to encounter. We don't want to just see the basketball. We want to see the kingdom of God and how it integrates, Lord. We want to see your throne. Lord, we want to see the creatures, the, the 24 elders. We want to be witnesses of this encounter, Lord. But Lord, we thank you. We want to be apocalypses, Lord. We want to be places, a people of disclosure. Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we wouldn't just read the, the, the words on the, page, on the pages today, but Lord, that we would see it, Lord. We would live it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just pray for a second. I'm speaking in a language of the Spirit where my Spirit communes with the Holy Spirit. His Spirit begins to speak, okay? Uh, hallelujah. And it begins to download into my Spirit the things. That just, just join me in this. Let His Spirit testify to your Spirit of truth and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 boldness in Jesus' name, boldness in Jesus' name, boldness in Jesus' name. Yep, 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 yep. Activation, 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 activation. Lord, send your lightnings. Lord, send your activating angels in this room right now. Send your angels that activate right now. Hosakaraba, hey, hey, hey. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, hey, 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 hey. Let them activate you right now. Let them activate right now. From knowledge to revelation. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, just lift up your hands. Lift it up by angels. Lift it up by angels. Lift it up by angels. Yeah, lift it up by angels right now. Lift it up by angels. Lift it up by angels. The Lord says, come up, come up, come up. The Lord says, come up. I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to show you the operation of things. I'm taking off the old. You're stepping into the new. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Wash yourself, the Lord says. I'm bringing you into the new place. I'm cleansing you. I'm washing you. I'm bringing you into the new place. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, 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 hey. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. A baptism today. A baptism today in fresh fire. In fresh fire. In fresh fire. And there's a new boldness coming on you, says the Lord. There's a new boldness coming on you. Sometimes you've worried about your word choice. Sometimes you've worried if I should say this or say that. So sometimes you haven't spoken the things that I've put in your heart, says the Lord. But the Lord says, I'm bringing you into a new boldness. And it's going to be easy. It's going to feel so natural. And the Lord says, you don't need to worry about hurting people because the Lord says, I'm going to use you to restore people. And I just see the Lord coming alongside of you. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new strength that is not in your own. I'm going to give you a new strength. Hallelujah. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's not by your strength. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Three, two, one. Fire right now in Jesus' name. Hey, 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 hey. 
I rebuke the tormentor in this room in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devourer even on people's finances and the lack of accumulation. It's like you just can't. I I said I rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. I rebuke mindsets associated with with the devourer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lady in the white sweater. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Yeah, just come on the aisle here. Hallelujah. 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 You're crossing over. You're crossing over. The Lord says you're crossing over. 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 There's no going back. There's no going back. There's no going back. There's no going back. Hallelujah. 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 Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Your imagination has not perceived the things that the Lord has in store for you. Hallelujah. Can you tap her? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, you're going to come to? You're going to come to? Hallelujah. 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 Just stand right here. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for both of you. Hallelujah. 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 The God of fire. I feel the God of fire. I feel the God of fire. I feel the God of fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That same fire that came on Mount Sinai. I feel the God of fire in this room. I see a baptism of fire. Ha ha ha. Showed rubble. Ho ho ho. See a baptism of fire. And it's not coming to destroy you. It's coming to destroy those things that have kept you from the fullness of Him. It's coming to destroy those things that have held you back. The Lord says, I'm not going to hurt you, but I am going to to liberate you from everything that has kept you from the fullness of my love. Hallelujah. 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 So I declare the fire of God right now in Jesus' name. Yep, 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 yep. More, Lord. More, Lord. Loose right now in Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. Yep, 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 yep. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy abundance in Jesus' name. Abundance more than enough in Jesus. You'll say this is enough. The Lord says it's not enough. The Lord says I'm going to use you to feed hungry tummies. The Lord says I'm going to use you to heed, feed the hungry, to feed the hungry. Yet the Lord says there's more provision, place of finance, a place of abundance. Hallelujah. 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 I said there's more. <laughs> I said there's more. <laughs> I said there's more. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How many know that there's more? There's more. There's more. There's more. Hallelujah. He's going to honor your hunger. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's more. There's more. There's more. Oh, there's more. There's more. There's more. Hallelujah. Oh, la ba. Uh, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade in Jesus' name. Upgrade in Jesus' name. Upgrade in Jesus' name. Upgrade in Jesus' name. You've seen the need, but you said there's got to be greater solutions. There's got to be greater answers. Somebody's got to do something. When's somebody going to do something? And the Lord says, I'm bringing you a solution anointing. The Lord says, you're going to see the need. You're going to be able to step into it. Sometimes it'll be a, practi- a, a, a matter of practical engineering, but then other times it'll be a matter of finance. And it's like, you'll You'll have the ability, which is the word power, you'll have the ability to either solve the problem or to be able to pay for it to get solved, if that makes sense. So I just declare abundance in Jesus' name. I just declare the more, the more, the more, the, the wisdom of God in action, the wisdom of God, not just like book knowledge, right? Some people have the book knowledge, but they don't know how to put it to work. But Daniel, you're going to be like a Daniel. And I just declare, uh, Lord, use him to bring solutions, biblical, supernatural, natural solutions that help a lot of people, that help a lot of people, that help a lot of people. Yep, the Lord says you're getting out of your comfort zone. It's like a Peter getting out of the boat kind of a thing. Um, and you're like, it, it, and, and selfishly, you're like, it's a little scary. But corporately, you know that what God can do through you is going to help a whole lot of people. Okay? So it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Does any of that make sense? Yeah. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Hallelujah. 
Uh, just lift up your hands in this place. How many you know that the glory of the Lord is in this place? How many of you know that, that, that you can receive what you need from the glory right now? So Father, in Jesus' name, every spirit, every unclean spirit that is not of the Holy Spirit, I say fire on you right now. In Jesus' name, I break every stronghold in your life right now. I break every stronghold right now in your life. And I loose you right now into the glory. Hallelujah. Your place of, of abiding. Your place of solution. Your place of intimacy. Your place of companionship. Right now. Right now. Let him take you up. Let him take you up. Let him take you up. Hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah, let me, let me pray for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lift up your hands, buddy. Hallelujah. 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 Come burn like a fire in this man. Lord, I pray that you put a fire in his belly. Father, I pray you put a fire in his belly that there would be a righteous authority and boldness that you impregnate him with. I say things can change. I declare things can change. Things will change. Father, I pray, Lord. I pray, Lord. I, I see the Lord building you up. He's edifying you this morning. I call you up, Jeremiah. I call you up into your authority in Christ. I call you up into promotion. I call you up into opportunity. Come burn like a fire right now, King Jesus. Burn like a fire right now, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything can change in a moment. Everything can shift in a moment. When you see it, when you see it in heaven, you can, you can execute it on the earth. When you see it in the heavens, you can execute it on the earth. When you see it, you can become it. When you see it, you can step into it. The Lord says, open the eyes of your heart. Look at, look at what I see. Look at what I see. Yep, yep, see and do. See and live. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory to God, glory, 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 glory to God, glory, 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 glory to God, glory, glory, glory. Glory to God, glory, 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 glory to God. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Mm. Well, oh, glory to God, be blessing and honor. Can I pray for this gal right here? Can you, uh, oh, glory, 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 glory to God, glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Come, Lord. Come, Lord shift right now in Jesus' name. Everything changes as of today. 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 Right now in Jesus' name. I loose the fire of God right now. The fire of God. Everything changes. Shift it right now. Shift it right now. Shift it right now. Shift it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More fire right now. Fire right now. Fire right now. Fresh baptism right now. Hallelujah. 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 Your eyes have not seen but they're going to hallelujah your ears haven't heard but they're going to hallelujah 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 I said everything changes as of today I say everything changes as of right now I say everything shifts right now hallelujah 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 more Lord more Lord more Lord more Lord more Lord glory glory to God oh Oh, 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 
We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Can our prayer ministry team come? The Lord is moving in this room. He is moving in this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is moving in this room. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever you need can be found in Him this morning. Whatever you need can be found in Him. Uh, this morning. If you need prayer this morning, I want to invite you uh, to the altar. Our prayer ministry team will pray for you. Uh, they'll stand with you. But let's keep this place a holy place uh, this morning. Um, if you want to do conversation and all that, please do, but let's do it out in the foyer. Let's create a holy place here for lives to be transformed by God's glory. Let's create a, a place of, 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 of tabernacle here in this room. Hallelujah. And we invite you back tonight. Uh, we're just going to go deeper tonight. We're just going to, we're going to go, we're just going to just dive, swan dive into his goodness uh, tonight. So I call you blessed of the Lord and highly favored. You are absolutely loved. God bless you.